profound boredom. Excessive positivity also expresses itself as an excess of stimuli, information, and impulses. It radically changes the structure and economy of attention. Perception becomes fragmented and scattered. Moreover, the mounting burden of work makes it necessary to adopt particular dispositions toward time and attention. Zeit und Aufmerksamkeitstechnik. This in turn affects the structure of attention and cognition. The attitude toward time and environment, known as multitasking, does not represent civilizational progress. Human beings in the late modern society of work and information are not the only ones capable of multitasking. Rather, such an aptitude amounts to regression. Multitasking is commonplace among wild animals. It is an attentive technique, indispensable for survival in the wilderness. An animal busy with eating must also attend to other tasks. For example, it must hold rivals away from its prey. It must constantly be on the lookout lest it be eaten while eating. At the same time, it must guard its young and keep an eye on its sexual partner. In the wild, the animal is forced to divide its attention between various activities. That is why animals are incapable of contemplative immersion. Either they are eating or they are copulating. The animal cannot immerse itself contemplatively in what it is facing, gegenüber, because it must also process background events. Not just multitasking, but also activities such as video games produce a broad but flat mode of attention which is similar to the vigilance of a wild animal. Recent social developments and the structural change of wakefulness are bringing human society deeper and deeper into the wilderness. For example, bullying has achieved pandemic dimensions. Concern for the good life, which also includes life as a member of the community, is yielding more and more to the simple concern for survival. We owe the cultural achievements of humanity, which include philosophy, to deep contemplative attention. Culture presumes an environment in which deep attention is possible. Increasingly, such immersive reflection is being displaced by an entirely different form of attention, hyperattention. A rash change of focus between different tasks, sources of information, and processes characterizes this scattered mode of awareness. Since it also has a low tolerance for boredom, it does not admit the profound idleness that benefits the creative process. Walter Benjamin calls this deep boredom a dream bird that hatches the egg of experience. If sleep represents the high point of bodily relaxation, deep boredom is the peak of mental relaxation. A purely hectic rush produces nothing new. It reproduces and accelerates what is already available. Benjamin laments that the dream bird's nests of tranquility and time are vanishing in the modern world. No longer does one spin and weave. Boredom is a warm grey fabric on the inside with the most lustrous and colourful silks. In this fabric we wrap ourselves when we dream. We are at home in the arabesques of its lining. As tranquility vanishes, the gift of listening goes missing, as does the community of listeners. Our community of activity, active Gemeinschaft, stands diametrically opposed to such rest. The gift of listening is based on the ability to grant deep contemplative attention, which remains inaccessible to the hyperactive ego. If a person experiences boredom while walking and has no tolerance for this state, he will move restlessly in fits and starts or go this way and that. However, someone with greater tolerance for boredom will recognize after a while that walking as such is what bores him. Consequently, he will be impelled to find a kind of movement that is entirely different. Running or racing does not yield a new gait. It is just accelerated walking. Dancing or gliding, however, represent entirely new forms of motion. Only human beings can dance. It may be that boredom seized him while walking so that after, and through this attack, he would make the step from walking to dancing. Compared with linear walking, straight ahead, the convoluted movement of dancing represents a luxury. It escapes the achievement principle entirely. The term vita contemplativa is not meant to evoke, nostalgically, a world where existence originally felt at home. Rather, it connects to the experience of being, seinserfahrung, in which what is beautiful and perfect does not change or pass, a state that eludes all human intervention. 
The basic mood that distinguishes it is marveling at the way things are, so sign, which has nothing to do with practicality or processuality. Modern Cartesian doubt has taken the place of wonder, yet the capacity for contemplation need not be bound to imperishable being. Especially whatever is floating, inconspicuous or fleeting, reveals itself only to deep contemplative attention. Likewise, it is only contemplative lingering that has access to phenomena that are long and slow. Paul Cézanne, a master of deep contemplative attention, once remarked that he could see the fragrance of things. This visualization of fragrances requires profound attention. In the contemplative state, one steps outside oneself, so to speak, and immerses oneself in the surroundings. Merleau-Ponty describes Cézanne's mode of contemplatively observing a landscape as a kind of externalization or de-interiorization. Entinerlichung. Quote, he would start by discovering the geological structure of the landscape. Then, according to Madame Cézanne, he would halt and gaze, his eyes dilated. The landscape thinks itself in me, he said, and I am its consciousness. End quote. Only profound attention prevents unsteadiness of the eyes and yields the composure capable of joining the wandering hands of nature. Without such contemplative composure, the gaze errs restlessly and finds expression for nothing. That said, art is expressive action. Even Nietzsche, who replaced being with will, knew that human life ends in deadly hyperactivity when every contemplative, beschaulich, element is driven out. Quote, From lack of repose, our civilization is turning into a new barbarism. At no time have the active, that is to say the restless, counted for more. That is why one of the most necessary corrections to the character of mankind that have to be taken in hand is a considerable strengthening of the contemplative element in it. End quote.